there's so many topics that I want to touch on there because there was so much excitement that we talked about a lot. One, I would say that consistently across the two games, Lindsay Horan has stood out as a leader on this mm -hmm. team. Um, that's not something that I really felt when she was named as the captain. I will go back on my word and say I was like, why Lindsay? She has proven that across yeah, these games. She's played really well. Yeah. <clears throat> she's played really well, and she seems like this great leader. She's obviously putting everything on the field for her. So congratulations to her on getting her goal as well and seeing her with the young players was great. Um, but I want to just kind of get really into detail here about Mia Fischel because that's a player that we have to talk about because when Alex Morgan was on the field, the first 45, it was a completely different style yes. of play. Yeah, and, and I think in terms of Lindsay Horan in that first 45, she had a few different headers. She's clearly the aerial target in the box um, when the starting lineup that's out there is out there. The thing I noticed about Mia Fischel is immediately her physicality mm -hmm. on the pitch. She wants to play back to goal. She wants to receive the ball at her feet and hold off multiple defenders. Anytime there's an aerial challenge, Fischel is going to be up and challenging for it, winning a lot of them as well. And to have the versatility to not only have Fischel win challenges inside the box but Lindsay Horan it takes pressure off of Horan so she doesn't have to be the one getting her head on it every single time Fischl is one of the best number nines that we've seen because of her ver versatility she's got the aerial presence she can play back to goal she can combine really well with the players underneath of her if it's Lindsay Horan if it's Jaden Shaw out wide she can get into the box she loses her defenders I mean mm -hmm. the list goes on for Mia Fischl she is in a complete number nine. Yeah, I agree. And I think something that's really important about her game that maybe we haven't had with this women's national team is how she checks to the ball and mm -hmm. pulls center backs out of position because we've always had great wingers who like to go 1v1. We know they're going to be fast and physical and get in behind. But I think in the first half, all the forwards were making the same runs. Mm -hmm. Everyone was running away from the ball. No one was really coming to. And when Mia Fischel came in, and she was checking off of the line, it allowed so much space. How much better was the U.S. switching the ball, mm -hmm. whipping the ball into space? Even Jaden Shaw was doing it from the opposite side of the pitch, which I was like, this girl's on fire. She's playing <laughs> like she's 27. I love this. Uh, but it just it gave so much more depth to the attack of this women's yeah. national team, and it proved it with all of the goals. And when Fischel drops deeper into the midfield, we saw that Shaw then pressed high. Mm -hmm. into that higher number nine in behind role and the way that the system was set up Emily Fox was on the right at that point she was able to get yep, higher and her. that's how she got the assist to Lindsay Horan's goal because of that movement mm -hmm. and that freedom it, is it what is what is allowing this team to flourish that yeah. freedom that we're talking about that they're actually intertwining and they don't feel so mm -hmm. compelled to just go one-way streets yeah. is what the difference that we're seeing with this national team and that's exactly what we need to see going forward um, but as we talk about me official there were some comments on her in the press conference uh, and her playing with Tigres and now being with the national team. Let's go ahead and take a listen. Alejandro from San Diego Punta Football. Mia Fischer has been playing at this level for the past couple seasons with Tigres Femenil. Mm -hmm. What do you think took so long for the U.S. national team to take notice of her? Well, before she answers that, I'm going to say she wasn't playing at this level because she was playing with Tigres and not at the national level. But you can speak to her talents. Yeah, I think... Um... I think we, well, I know we were watching Mia with Tigris, and uh, she did a great job with them. And we also had some other talented forwards in the mix, and it wasn't the right time for the coaching staff at the time to bring her in. And I think that she's benefited a lot from her time at Tigris. She, I've known Mia since she was a young, young player, very young player, and uh, you can, what she developed playing for Tigris is, is more. Um, I think actually some of that back to goal and combination play underneath and things like that were well practiced with Tigres. And now you see her adding a different element to her game at Chelsea. And this is just part of her journey. And now she has a next step with her journey with us. Um, but I know she really values that time at Tigres and, and so do I. I enjoyed watching her there. I, I actually got a chance to watch in person before I joined the national team staff and after I joined the national team staff. And it's a great, great club. And uh, she had a high impact there, and, and now she's on to a different chapter of her life. And, and both have an influence in the player that she is that is now with us. Um, two very different reactions there. There's Aaron Heifetz, the PR for U.S. Women's National Team, cutting in, um, saying what we heard there. Mia Fischel has been playing. Oh, sorry. Before she answers, Mia wasn't playing at this level. She was playing in Tigres and not at a national team level. Um, We'll get into it, but Twyla Kilgore's answer was very different. I, I appreciate her answer, but it feels like that comes into question about how these American players are being judged and evaluated and whether there's an American and Eurocentric bias um, to saying, yeah, she's not playing at this level. She's playing with Tigres. 
wherever she was playing, she was completely dominant in the league, and she was scoring 30 goals in a season. I mean, it's incredible. Yeah, I, I kind of scoffed that he cut uh, Coach Twyla Kilgore off and said that, and I think, I, I don't know, watching her reaction, I was really surprised. Um, yeah, I thought that that was kind of distasteful. Mia Official has been killing it from college to pro in every level of her pro career, and I think it's been a long time coming that she gets this opportunity to be in the women's national team. Um, yeah, I really didn't like that, but he, he also wasn't asked the question. I don't know why he jumped in at that moment. I think uh, Twyla Kilgore answered it. I liked her answer at the end. She was just developing that part of her game. We wanted yeah. to give her a chance with Chelsea to develop more, which I totally agree. She's training with the best of the best every single day at Chelsea with a really amazing coach. Um, but yeah, the, the official's that girl. She has been that girl <laughs> coming in scoring goals. She's adding layers to this women's national team, and I think it's just going to be more and more creative and how they're going to utilize her playing uh, with her back to goal and that's what this U.S. Women's National Team has been missing for a really long time. So I hope she has a chip on her shoulder hearing that. And it's like, you know what? Watch this next game. Darian, I got you. I, I think Mia Official already had a chip on her shoulder yeah, before course, yeah. any of this. Because she got, she chose not to play in the NWSL. Mm -hmm. And she chose to go to Tigres after being drafted. And teams wanting her in the NWSL. Yep. And she chose to play in the MX Femenil and get 30 goals across the season or, or across the year for them. And then she signs with Chelsea. And she was able to develop her game, I think, in a really different way than if she was in the NWSL. She, Definitely. She played and won the golden boot and was incredible throughout them. And I think that the the level of Liga MX Femenil can't be in question right now because no. you look across the NWSL, there are multiple clubs that have partnered with the, the domestic league in Mexico to have friendlies and to compete with mm -hmm. them and to invite them to the United States and go to Mexico and play during the CCC preseason for both sides and to create that competition and also that partnership. There yeah. are CONCACAF partners. We should want to be developing a, them. A, a joint bid coming from yes. them. Yes. So you would want yes. to be in partnership and not be speaking down towards sorry I took this personally as a member of the Mexican national team there are about four members of the Mexican national team on this Tigres side as well to say hey no you know this is not that level like you said Mia official has been that girl no matter where she is like yep. don't don't think to to speak down mm -hmm. upon it yeah it's just been part of her development as a as the player that we're seeing her now and whether he agrees or not is honestly irrelevant she's here yeah exactly uh, and scoring goals so yeah, go go me official. You're killing it. Don't don't listen to that. You made the right decision. Your career is skyrocketing right now, and yeah, Inevitable. so well deserved. She controls yeah. her career. Yeah, right and, now, I, and she we, has. I love that because cool. we actually don't see that a lot from players mm -hmm. that are like, you know what? I'm not going to go there. I'm going to pave my own way. And she's yeah. playing at Chelsea and is now on the women's national team.